America, coming to you from Nashville, Tennessee. My name is Ashley Picconi. I'm the press officer at the American Institute of Physics, uh, and we here have some great science to share with you today, beginning with three press conferences this morning and more throughout the day. Uh, videos of this live stream will be available upon request, and I'm happy to connect you with the presenters. Um, you can email media at AIP.org for any questions. After we hear from each presenter, we'll have a few minutes for questions from the audience. If you're on the live stream, there's a question box that you can type those in. Um, so let's get started. Our first presenter is Peter D'Antonio of RPG Acoustical Systems and he is going to be discussing music studios and the interesting technology within them. That includes one studio that's right here in Nashville that I'm very excited to learn about. So, Peter? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'll be presenting uh, three papers at this session. Uh, did one yesterday, and we have one this, two this afternoon. And <clears throat> the first paper discusses the various types of acoustical distortion that occur within a room. Um, we have to overcome these so that when we're creating musical product, we make the room neutral. And so they are uh, low frequency room modes, the speaker boundary interference response, comb filtering, and pore diffusion. And this typically starts with a dimensional ratio analysis <clears throat> of the length of width and the height ratios in a room. Uh, that occurs only valid for a cuboid room, and so it has some limitations, and we will be comparing that with a low frequency finite element matrix model analysis. Uh, the second talk <clears throat> concerns a new program that I developed called a non cuboid iterative room optimizer. We call it Nero. And this deals specifically with recording studios for which the, the session this afternoon uh, was created. And we solve these problems <clears throat> below a certain frequency, which is called the Schroeder frequency, using a wave-based model. In this case, we're using a finite element uh, model, and uh, which you see in the upper left. I'm just going to select a pointer, uh, which you see here. And this controls the low frequency response in the room, the frequency, the time response, <clears throat> and the speaker boundary interference, which means if you buy one speaker, you get a really good deal because you get four other virtual speakers, which present themselves as reflections off the room boundaries. And we'll be dealing with those issues. Above the Schroeder frequency, <clears throat> we have created an integrated geometrical model in which we have a image source model which locates the first, second, third, low, low order reflections in the room so that we could identify them and we can treat them acoustically. And then a ray tracing model, which allows us to calculate the reverberation time over the full audio spectrum. <clears throat> the low frequency challenge is that you're seeing a 3D representation of the high pressure and low pressure uh, in the room, and it changes with every frequency. And so the challenge is to find an appropriate place for the loudspeakers and the listeners and the acoustical treatment where the pressure is uniform between the high and the low extremes. That's a pretty tough challenge. And so we use an iterative approach using what is called a, ge a, ge a genetic algorithm, which the survival of the fittest occurs. And we obtain a solution for the geometry the positions of the loudspeakers, the positions of the listeners, and the acoustical treatment. And so we try to make the low frequency response in the room as flat as possible, so no frequencies <clears throat> are energized more than others. We have a time response. This is how the sound decays in the room with respect to time. And here you see an untreated room, and we have these problematic <clears throat> uh, uh, frequencies which ring, and they they corrupt the sound, and then we have a reverberation time, which is non-ideal. And the goal then is to have a very uniform temporal decay, so all the frequencies decay at the same time, and a very uniform reverberation time. 
This is our latest project in Paris. It's called Mix with the Masters. It's a studio <clears throat> called Rue Boyer in which successful producers and engineers hold master classes to explain how they create the latest hits. Um, and uh, we have modeled this studio and that is going to be um, what I will be presenting in the first of this afternoon's presentations. Then following that will be a discussion of the design of Blackbird Studios, <clears throat> which is uh, in town here, along with colleague George Massenberg. We designed this studio and built it uh, in 2005. And uh, we'll be discussing the design principles back then, what we've learned, impressions initially and over the years. And um, so this proof of concept, uh, basically in which we were trying to get a uniform neutral environment, a much broader, what is called the sweet spot, so that when the mixing engineer moves around, uh, he has a little bit of a latitude as to where to move, you know, so he doesn't have his head in, in a neck vice. And so we want to broaden that sweet spot. And we want to provide a, 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 a room ambiance because these engineer producers work in these rooms for countless hours. And so you want the room to be creative. You want to be able to uh, <clears throat> you know, collaborate with your colleagues and not be in, impaired by the acoustics of the room. Because saying that I made up many years ago, you want to listen to the music and not the room. Okay. And this is what the room looks like. It has 139,000 different height wood blocks on the wall that you see here. Um, both on the walls and on the ceiling, we have a fractal surface, a two-dimensional fractal surface, very complicated. And the room is very challenging. We had a session there yesterday morning. Um, but once you get over it, looking at uh, all of these wood blocks, um, you, uh, you move along. And the ceiling is a two-dimensional fractal, and it has a binary amplitude diffuser over it and a membrane absorber for the low frequencies. And the room has a, a very, very unique time response. This is the direct sound, and this is the reflections. And they're 30 dB below the direct sound, which means you should be in an anechoic chamber, but the room has a really nice ambiance. So it's a mystery, and we call it an ambient anechoic environment. And with that, I will... Turn the chair over. Great. Well, thank you, Peter. Um, so if you have any questions on the live stream, we're happy to take those in the question box. Um, I'll kind of kick us off with one. If you're a musician or a sound mixer uh, and you're working in something like Blackbird Studio, what's, what's unique about that? What's unique about it is what is happening I'm old enough to remember moving from mono, from one speaker, to stereo, and then to a, 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 a thing called 5.1, in which you were surrounded by <clears throat> uh, four speakers and a sub. Uh, now we're talking about immersive audio. Uh, Dolby has come out with a system. Apple has come out with a system called spatial audio. And so what's unique about this room is that it's a very immersive environment. All of the loudspeakers. There are 16 loudspeakers in the room. Uh, you have speakers around the ground plane, you have six on the ceiling, you have one sub, you have a, a, a low frequency <clears throat> sub for dinosaur footprints <laughs> uh, to shake the room. And so there are very few environments um, and uh, many people feel this is the most unique uh, surround immersive environment uh, that exists at the moment. So that's what makes it unique. Right. And then uh, I'm wondering if you can just tell us a little bit more about what this, uh, am I saying it correctly, aniconic or what that yeah. word kind of means in this so, system? Uh, so I'm a physicist and uh, scientists use what are called boundary conditions to solve a problem. Uh, in mathematics, you have boundary conditions. Um, in acoustics, the boundary conditions are an anechoic chamber on one end which has no reflections. So the walls have very deep uh, triangular wedges of a porous material to remove all reflections. And on the other extreme, you have a, re a reverberation chamber in which you have all reflections. So the room is very reverberant. You, you clap your hands and it rings for eight seconds. 
And so <clears throat> my design that I created over three decades ago incorporates portions of an anechoic response in a room and portions of a reverberant aspect in a room. Okay, we've got a question from the room. Sure. Hi, thanks for your talk. Um, I think you may have partially addressed this just a moment ago, but I'm curious about what advantages of the room shape go into the, you know, whether you have an immersive environment or whether you have good acoustical properties or not. You know, for example, you started off with a shoebox size room with certain ratios of the, of the sizes. Right. right. Um, is the purpose of that, that kind of shape to give you a, low, a good low frequency response or a nice pr uniform pressure distribution or, or what exactly? Okay, that, that's a very good question. Um, because <clears throat> uh, every field of acoustics has a very long differential equation which, which is very complex to comprehend. And when the room is cuboid, meaning that all the walls are, are 90 degrees to one another, there's a very simple solution to that equation which is based on the dimensional ratios. The ratio between the, the height is the number one, so the width over the height, length over the height. And um, the problem with that is <clears throat> there are certain locations within a room where the pressure response is not uniform. So like when you're sitting in, immediate, in the absolute center of the room, that width mode, a mode is just a, a, a wave that builds up upon itself. When you're sitting in the middle of the room, you have a big null. You have a dip in the middle of the room. So you want to modify the geometry uh, to uh, allow positions that you can sit and positions that you can place all of these uh, loudspeakers. Um, and then, um, in addition to that, you want to have a location where you can place the speaker. Because if the speaker is in a null in the room, then you're not going to hear that frequency. So you need to find a, a pressure that is between the peaks and the nulls to put all the speakers and at all the frequencies. So it, it's, it's an enormous challenge, and we, we never get it completely correct. But uh, So you want to modify. There are not that many variables. The only variables we have are the room geometry and the location of the listeners and the speakers. And then we use acoustical treatment to patch everything that we have not been able to solve with with just the geometry and the positions. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> great. Um, well, thank you, Peter. It was great to learn about. We'll be back in a couple minutes with our next presenter.